Josh from Forward Ag here. Today's video is going to be a bit different than usual. This will be a tutorial for skinned mesh objects in Farming Simulator 19. Before we get started, you want to make sure you have updated versions of Blender or Maya and Giants Editor. This will be required. A skinned mesh is rather simple. It's taking an object, cylinder, cube, cone, curve, or sphere, and giving it the ability to flex and move using anchors from point A to point B sometimes anchors in between. This is often used for hydraulic lines on tractors, trucks, implements, and amongst other various uses like suspension for vehicles. To start, you'll wanna create your mesh. I'm gonna go ahead and create a curve. So we'll go ahead and add curve, and we'll use a path. We'll go ahead and press seven, so we're overhead. We'll press R and type in 90 and enter. There we are. And that's just gonna rotate it along the Y axis so that everything is nice and straight aligned and we're working kind of from the sides here. After that, we'll give this curve some structure, a material name, and finally convert it into a mesh object. Let's see here. We want to apply rotation and scale, make sure that's out of the way. Um, let's go ahead and give this some structure. So we will go to geometry, scroll down, and you'll see depth. Let's give it um, 0 0.03. So I would say that's a typical hose or tube for farming simulator there. Um, that's going to be around three inches in game anyhow. So it's gonna be pretty useful. Um, after that's all said and done, you'll want to go ahead and right click and convert to mesh. That'll make it so that it's an object instead of a curve and you'll be able to see that up here. Next, we'll just go ahead and give it a material name. We'll just click material and let's do hose mat. And we can give this really any color you'd like. It doesn't really matter. Next, we'll wanna create two armatures. These will be our points A and B. So I'm gonna go ahead and press one and three and that's gonna bring us to the side. And we're gonna create our first armature here. And you can actually press S and just kind of scroll with your mouse to kind of make it a little bit smaller. It doesn't really matter on the size or the shape. We will go ahead and uh, select our movement here and just bring this to point A on our mesh. Next, we'll go ahead and press Shift D to duplicate and then press Y. That way it keeps the object on the Y axis and we can just scroll it down to point B for our mesh. Now, to keep track of our progress a little bit easier, we're gonna go ahead and select this armature here, and we will select the object data properties, and go right up here, and we're just gonna rename this point A, and select our bone properties, and we're just gonna give it the name bone A. That way we know that these are both associated with this armature. And we'll go ahead and repeat the process for our point B. So point B and bone B. There we go. Next up, we can select our hose and select our point A by holding down shift and select. That way your mesh is first and your armature is second. Then we'll right click parent with empty groups. Now, if you click on your mesh and you go down to object data properties, you'll see that you have a vertex group for bone A. That shows us that this mesh is now associated with the bone A vertex group in this armature. Now we'll wanna repeat that process for our bone B armature. So we'll select our mesh, shift, and select our point B, right click, parent, and empty groups. Now, if you go ahead and click back on your mesh, you see that you have bone A and bone B. After that, we will press A, that will select all of our objects, parent, and we'll wanna clear and keep the transformation. That way, this will keep everything the way it is. It'll keep our vertex groups on our mesh, but it'll make it so that when we move an armature, say we have to adjust its position, it's not going to move the mesh in object mode. Now that we have our vertex group set up, we'll wanna assign them to each point on our hose. So we'll select the hose and we will head into edit mode and we'll wanna select just half of the mesh. 
So let's start with the end that's associated with point A. Typically what I do is I head up here and I toggle on X-ray. That way you can select everything all the way around just from the side and keep track of what you're selecting um, all the way throughout. So we'll press C. This will give us a nice circle. You can change the radius, make it larger or smaller with your scroll wheel. And we'll just select all the way down to the middle, just right about there, so that if you zoom in, you'll see we have just this half of the mesh selected. And if you head over to the right in your object data properties, you'll see that bone A and bone B are um, associated with this assign button and the weight and remove, select, deselect. We're gonna avoid these three here. We're gonna focus on weight and assign. What we wanna do is select assign with a weight of one to this end for bone A because this is our point A. So we'll assign that. Now we'll click on bone B while this is still selected and we'll just press zero, bring that to a weight of zero and assign. Now that means that bone B will have no control over this end here and bone A will have full control. After that, you'll want to head up to select, invert. That will completely invert our selection from one side to the other and we can repeat the process. So we're already on bone A. We'll want to assign that a weight of zero, just like so. Now select bone B, type in one and assign this a weight of one, essentially just repeating our steps from the first half. Once that's finished, we can deselect everything, head back into edit mode, and we're still on our hose mesh here. So we'll select our bone A vertex group and we'll head up into weight paint mode. And you'll notice that this half is entirely red with a little bit of yellow, green, light blue, and then finally dark blue. Uh, obviously, dark red and down to yellow and green is just showing that the heavier the weight, the different color it'll be. So red is gonna be obviously your heaviest weight, yellow gets lighter, green, and so on and so forth. Blue obviously being the lightest. If we go ahead and select our bone B, you'll see that it's completely opposite. So we'll go back to bone A, we'll head up to the weights tab, and we'll select smooth. That's just going to bring everything out nice and evenly. It makes it so it's not so dense in the center. I already have this a little bit set up for typically what I use anyway, but what I'll probably change is this expand and contract selection. Um, this is just gonna bring it back and forth and kind of um, move our weights and adjust them so that they're nice and, you know, one side's on one side and one side's on the other side. Um, I'll probably say we'll bring this to negative 0.3. That way it's nice and even in the middle. We have the light blue to dark blue, and then we have our light blue, green, yellow, and finally red, and this will be where our anchor is heaviest on point A. After that, you'll want to select bone B, and you'll see how it's super dense, just like the bone A was. Repeat the same process, smooth, and it's just going to do the same exact thing. Now both sides are smoothed out nice and evenly, and they're going to flow into one another when you go ahead and work with this in Giants Editor. Once that's complete, we'll go back up to object mode. We'll just double check by applying our rotation and scale just to be safe. After that, we'll get rid of this toggle x-ray mode so we can see everything. And we'll go ahead and press A, that way everything is selected. Head up to File, Export, and we're gonna export as an i3D. Now, this is an add-on that is from GitHub. I will post the link down below along with the links to Giants Editor, Blender, um, and Maya if I can find it. Like I said, I don't use Maya, so I apologize. Um, but this is just gonna be a quick add-on that you throw into Blender. That way you'll be able to export it as an i3D and work with it in Giants Editor. So we will export that. And we're gonna title this O's Mesh. It doesn't really matter what you title it. It's totally okay. It's, it's, this is just for tutorial purposes, no worries. So after that's titled what we want it to be, we'll export the i3D, of course, with selected objects. And that exported pretty darn quick. So next, we'll want to go ahead and open up that object in Giants Editor. All right, now that we've opened up our hose mesh i3D, um, we're going to go ahead and look at our mesh, which we will rename hose mesh. And then we have our bone A and then our bone B. And those are left where our um, armatures were left in Blender. So this really all it's going to be is, um, you know, you can move this up and out of the way. That 
simply doesn't control much. What you're looking at is the bones. So when you move the bone, you'll see that the center where we smoothed out is flexing and stretching with the bones themselves. And this will help you work with all sorts of things. If we rotate it, it flexes. If we go ahead and click our bone B, it will rotate and flex. Now in Giants Editor, yes, this will look a little bit weird and a little bit stretched out, especially if you move things, if you shrink things, if you expand things, etc. Um, but typically what will happen is, say we rotate our hose, it's going to rotate like this. And if you're on the same axis, say you're on a trailer, it's gonna rotate like this. Now we have a lot of weight on this end and a lot of weight on this end, but it's a very lightweight in the middle. So if you want to adjust that in Blender, you'll just want to expand the weight down closer to each end and each point. So you'll have less weight here and less weight here, and those will kind of flex a little bit more for you. But as an example, I have our CC7500, which I have um, connected a mesh to right here. This is a sort of S mesh, and this is our, our standard hose for anhydrous. And then I have our electric wire that connects all the way to down here and that is stuck at a point where we have our um, just our object change but we have our mesh here and then our mesh here and those are both connected with the same bones so it's not just one mesh you can control multiple meshes with the same bones so if i take the hitch here because of course if i rotate the axis that won't do anything not in a giant's editor anyway but if i rotate the hitch you'll see that the hoses will rotate along with it because it's fixed to point A and point B. That way, when it goes uh, around a corner or let's say up a hill or down a hill or everything kind of stretches in and out, uh, it'll flex with it. And really that's all a skinned mesh is. Now, the last thing I wanna note is when you go to your skinned mesh, you'll notice that this is just simply the mesh, it's just the object. Where I have the bones, I have this bone, which is our gooseneck bone that's up top there, that just connects that point there, point B. I have that connected to the mainframe. So what you can do is you can um, center click and drag that bone to whichever mesh you would like it connected to and anchored down to. And then if I drop this here and go to our hitch component, open this on up and you'll see our front hitch bone, that's down here. That connects them both so that it's anchored here and anchored here at the hitch and when I move the hitch it's able to have everything flex together and that should be it guys um, if you have any other questions feel free to comment below and I'll gladly help them out I hope that this tutorial helped as much as it could um, I've never really done one of these before so I apologize if I miss anything um, and yeah that's about it I hope you all have a good one take it easy